And you can do the same front loading protocol with selenium, 800 micrograms of selenium per day for let's say two to three weeks to restore intratesticular selenium concentrations and saturate it. Welcome to Vigorous Health. No, let's just call it for what it is. Vigorous Loads. I mean, you guys asked for it. So here it is. Coach Steve's protocol for monstrosorous ejaculations. And I'm, I'll try to do this video with a straight face, but if I burst out laughing for whatever reason, it's because I'm uh, visualizing certain scenarios which happened in the past while trying to figure out this protocol and um, show a lot of a love and appreciation while you're um, sharing with your partner. So the whole purpose here is, is to either make a gigantic mess or not make a mess at all. So we will also discuss how to improve the aroma of your monstrous ejaculation. So let's go over it. But first, it's very important to understand that certain things are going to detract from your overall semen volume. And especially for all the guys out there that are using performance enhancing drugs, let's just make a simple list of performance enhancing drugs or anabolic androgenic steroids, which are going to make your semen volume a lot less or almost non-existent. And the main culprit, which I already alluded to in the Prima Bolin video, is Trembolone. Now, I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this video already have experience with Trembolone. If you don't have experience with Trembolone, um, I'm going to say that it's not worth it. One of the reasons being that it's such a potent androgen with a really deleterious effect on your overall semen volume and your testicular size, because it, again, it's five times more androgenic than testosterone is. If you look at the androgenic or anabolic to androgenic ratio, so on paper, it's five times more androgenic and five times more anabolic than testosterone is. It's the most suppressive compound on your HPTA, and it will reduce semen volume tremendously. And even though the ejaculation intensity might be increased on Trembolone, the amount of overall ejaculate, the semen volume, is severely diminished. So if you want to impress your partner, Trembolone is completely off the menu. That isn't an option, even a low dose. So if you're thinking about, you know what, 150 milligrams of Trembolone per week shouldn't really impact your semen volume that much, you're wrong. <laughs> it will reduce it less than half to what it was on testosterone only or using a combination of testosterone and primobolin. From my experience and all of my clients, primobolin doesn't affect overall semen volume in any way, shape or form. But as soon as you add in a little bit of trembolone, nandrolone, ment, trestolone, semen volume is, is pretty dramatically diminished. And with nandrolone, it's not as dramatic as trembolone or trestolone. But I noticed on the nandrolone only cycle, for example, when I ran a thousand milligrams of nandrolone per week, that my semen volume was severely diminished as well. Now, it could be the case because I took out the testosterone and, you know, it's a little bit of a bro science out there, but they say that super physiological dosages of testosterone, a small percentage of that serum testosterone might actually enter the testicles and stimulate the Sertoli cells for spermatogenesis indirectly. Because, of course, in normal HPTA function, the luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone instruct the testicles to produce testosterone. The testosterone results in spermatogenesis, and the follicle-stimulating hormone results in spermatogenesis. So you would expect to have normal or, you know, impressive semen volume when you're completely drug-free. But when you add in the testosterone, some of that testosterone might actually activate spermatogenesis through the testicles, but you're still missing out on the follicle-stimulating hormone aspect. Well, you can find all that detail in the should you use ACG on cycle video or not, where I discuss this pathway through several different mechanisms. So please, if you're interested in complete spermatogenesis, which will increase your overall semen volume and result in or contribute to monstrous ejaculations, you should definitely watch that video, but consider HMG instead of ACG, because HMG contains bioidentical luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, and it's the follicle-stimulating hormone that activates the spermatogenesis besides the testosterone, whether that's produced with luteinizing hormone, human chorionic gonadotropin, or exogenous testosterone, which is entering the testicles. 
And it's the actual follicle stimulating hormone which is contained within the human menopausal gonadotropin that results in the most amount of spermatogenesis when you're using HMG and exogenous testosterone at the same time. So we'll get into the clomid a little bit later when we actually discuss medications and supplements to improve semen volume. So I just want to make perfectly clear that some of the performance enhancing drugs that we use in bodybuilding might prevent this protocol for monstrosorous ejaculations, might prevent them from working because progestogenic compounds, some of the statin drugs that we use in bodybuilding to keep our lipids under control, or some of the beta blockers that are being used to keep your heart rate under control and your blood pressure under control, those might detract from the overall semen volume. Now, the statins and the beta blockers have been shown to do that in drug-free people because they lower testosterone production slightly and overall hormone profile in the body. But when you're using exogenous testosterone, the amount of testosterone that might be able to enter the Sertoli cells should balance out the amount of semen volume reduction you would get from a beta blocker or a statin. So I don't think it's really an issue. But the progestogenic compounds, especially trimbolone and tristolone, forget it. <laughs> Whatever I talk in this video is probably not going to work. So you would have to take those compounds out if you want to impress your partner and make a mess or no mess at all. <laughs> trimbolone, tristolone, I wouldn't consider those compounds. And nandrolone, maybe your low joint protective dose of 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams per week while your testosterone is in the surplus to prevent this progestogenic activity of nandrolone by itself. That would be my general recommendation. Another recommendation, and this is very important, not only for your sexual performance, but especially for your semen volume, is stop masturbating so goddamn much. Really, I understand everybody's really, really horny on all these androgenic compounds, but if you're giving your semen volume away to the floor, or a tissue, or a sock. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to do this with a straight face, guys. Um, so if you give your semen away through pornography and your hand or, you know, whatever toy you decide to use, it's a giant waste because you can only produce that much semen through this protocol and store that within the seminal vesicles of the prostate. So if you give it all away for free, your partner is not going to be on the receiving end of this protocol. So do yourself a favor and do your partner a favor. Save this for lifting, chores around the house or typing on the keyboard, emailing, etc. Don't ruin your sensitivity because again, that's going to detract from your overall experience. So that's the whole point of this video, how to create these monstrous ejaculations. You need building blocks and it's actually pretty simple. All the building blocks that you are required during a post-cycle therapy will work on cycle to increase your semen volume. So that's 800 IUs, vitamin E with mixed tocopherols and tocotrienols. I think I pronounced it correctly in one go. No need for further editing. Second one is 50 to 100 milligrams of zinc. 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of carnitine. 4,000, 5,000 milligrams of taurine. 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 and 400 to 800 micrograms of selenium. Now with selenium, you can consider the 800 micrograms of selenium as a front load, the same you would do with uh, creatine, for example. Your maintenance dose is five grams of creatine, but you front load it with 10 grams of creatine for maybe two or three weeks to increase intracellular or intramuscular creatine stores. And you can do the same front loading protocol with selenium, 800 micrograms of selenium per day for let's say two to three weeks to restore intratesticular selenium concentrations and saturate it. And once the ejaculate is majorly impressive and your partner is happy with your love and appreciation, you can reduce the selenium to 400 micrograms per day and just sustain intratesticular selenium concentrations. So 400 micrograms of selenium is the upper tolerable intake for selenium. So you can get that from food, predominantly Brazil nuts. So what I like to do is I just have one Brazil nut per meal. One Brazil nut has about 100 micrograms of selenium. Now selenium you can find in most of the dietary protein sources. 
So you add 100 micrograms of selenium through one Brazil nut, not a handful of Brazil nut, and certainly not a whole bag of Brazil nuts. One Brazil nut per meal for a major nut after dinner. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make the analogies as um, comprehensive as possible. Now, when you do some research online on methods to improve overall semen volume, you'll see that vitamin C and vitamin B9, folic acid or folate, are also linked to increasing semen volume. Personally, I never found that to work. I take almost 10 grams of vitamin C per day and about 200 milligrams or micrograms of folate per day. But if I take that out at a certain point of time, I don't notice that my overall semen volume is reduced. So I don't feel that those compounds really work or contribute to the overall semen volume and the possibility for the maximum amount of ejaculate you can produce. But vitamin E, vitamin D3, carnitine, zinc, and selenium, and taurine, they highly contribute and they should help to sustain testicular function and overall testicular health while you're using performance enhancing drugs because again when your hpta is shut down and you're not producing that testosterone within your testicles itself and spermatogenesis is partially downregulated. at least make sure you get the building blocks for the maximum amount of semen you can produce and these micronutrients are especially important when you stimulate spermatogenesis with acg hmg or clomid they all increase the requirement for micronutrients and allow for the maximum amount of uh, semen volume you could possibly have while using exogenous testosterone or any other anabolic androgenic steroids and maybe even some of the SARMs which are suppressive. So when you go the ACG route, HMG route or Clomid route, all these micronutrients need to be in place and enhance your ability to impress when push comes to shove or when you pull up to the bumper. But now you should know what I mean, right? So let's go over the fertility drugs briefly. ACG, I feel that 100 to 150 IUs of ACG two to three times per week is more than sufficient to increase testicular function and improve overall ejaculate volume and size. HMG, about half, 75 IUs of HMG, which is in most formulations, 37.5 uh, IUs of luteinizing hormone and 37.5 IUs of follicle stimulating hormones should give comparable results to 100 to 150 IUs of ACG. And Clomid, I think 25 milligrams of Clomid is sufficient, will give you top of the reference range LH and FSH concentrations. Of course, Clomid blocks the estrogen receptors within the hypothalamus and the pituitaries and facilitates the release of gonadotropins. So, from all these three compounds, I feel that HMG is superior over ACG and Clomid. Clomid will work, hands down, but the problem with Clomid is that it acts as an estrogen in the brain, so you might get some weird estrogenic and emotional side effects, and the last thing you want is when you're impressing, you burst out into tears. So <laughs> I would go with the HMG out of all of those fertility drugs options to increase your overall semen volume just keep in mind that when you exclude the progestogenic compounds, you increase your overall micronutrient intake and perhaps use some of the fertility drugs that we discussed in this protocol. The overall quality of the orgasm and the orgasm duration is going to shoot up substantially because the semen volume and the ejaculate that's increased that you now need to expel... Uh, will expel under a significant amount of force, especially especially if you've been doing your Kegels and you uh, incorporated some of the, the PDA5 inhibitors to increase your erection quality, uh, or maybe perhaps use the PT141, the Vilesi that we discussed in that libido video. So if you combine all of this, you're increasing your overall ejaculate size and you're increasing the intensity of your erection itself, the orgasm quality, triple, double, 10 times, 10, 100x, really. <laughs> be ready for it. You should be well prepared. You might need to catch your breath. And if again, if you do your Kegels frequently and you train your seminal vesicles of the prostate to ejaculate the maximum amount um, under tremendous amount of force, yeah, Majorly impressive. <laughs> I guarantee it. 
So that pretty much concludes how to increase the intensity in the overall ejaculate. Let's discuss how to make it a little bit more palatable. And I'm not going from my experience, simply what I've heard anecdotally from my partners or previous partners um, that I was able to impress with some of the protocols that I discussed previously. So when you do a research online on this subject and you go to Chrome, and you start an incognito window, you sign out of Google because you don't want any of these search parameters in your search history, you start typing how to increase semen taste. Well, you get a ton of different reviews and a ton of different home remedies. The only things that I found to be working, pineapple, honey, and cinnamon. Now, I feel that honey, especially raw honey, like a raw manuka honey or a raw Bhutanese honey. Uh, most of you guys won't be able to get Bhutanese honey, but I'm relatively close and I have a couple of friends in Bhutan. Um, I don't ask them to send me raw Bhutanese honey for this purpose alone, simply because it tastes amazing, but it's, um, it's a very welcome side effect. So from what I've been told, um, raw manuka honey or raw Bhutanese honey will probably increase the taste of the semen um, <laughs> the most out of any of the home remedies with a pineapple following a close second and cinnamon a third and everything else that I've tried over the years is um, not really that effective from what I've heard. Again, from what I've heard, guys, be respectful in the comment section. I, I, see, your co I see what you're trying to do here and I'm not going to stand for it. Yeah? <laughs> no. Stop. Cool. Moving on. Now, the honey and the pineapple and the cinnamon might increase or improve the taste, but all of the medications and the performance enhancing drugs that we take in uh, bodybuilding or fitness or for whatever longevity purpose you're doing that, those will completely detract and destroy whatever taste you're trying to improve. So you should definitely take out a lot of the medications um, and then it's a trade-off. How important is your um, the taste of your love and appreciation that you have for your partner over the amount of muscle that you're trying to build? Metformin, some of the statin drugs, um, most of the performance enhancing drugs, and even the synthetic carrier oil, apparently it all makes it taste like medicine. You know, and... It doesn't matter how much raw manuka honey and pineapple and cinnamon you add into the mix. This medicinal undertone, this medicinal aroma, it completely attracts and makes it unpalatable from what I've been told. Yeah? From what I've been told. So keep that in mind. If you want to have the most palatable... <laughs> I can't do this with a straight face, man. If you want to have the most palatable, <laughs> monstrosolate ejaculate, most of the performance enhancing drugs you shouldn't take. And even all these little medications that we take um, once in a while or daily, some of the research chems, you know, some of the SARMs, especially in the powder forms or in the solution, everything contributes and will highly detract from the taste. So if you don't want to make a mess, you want to impress, but you don't want to make a mess. Hormone replacement. True hormone replacement. Maybe a little bit of growth hormone. One Brazil nut dipped in raw manuka honey. Um, let's say one teaspoon with each meal. Um, and I think that's the best suitable approach going forward. Again, if you're trying to build as much muscle as you can and you're, um, you're pretty much forced to take a wide variety of performance enhancing drugs, um, you might still be able to impress and make a mess. Um, yeah, but there will be a mess because your partner will not be, um, yeah, will not be, uh, will not find it palatable. So, <laughs> um, I think we can pretty much wrap it up right there. I hope you find this video to be helpful. And I, if your partner found this video to be helpful, she or him can leave a like as well. Hey, it's 2020. I don't judge whatever floats your boat. A him or a her or an in-between, all that matters is that you have the maximum amount of love and appreciation for your partner possible. And I really hope this video helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next. Um, I, I think we're going to leave it at one vigorous loads. But hey, you never know if this video does well. Maybe we can find another way to improve the love and appreciation you have for your partner. See you in the next video.